All right, uh, in this lesson what we're going to look at is how to graph absolute value functions. In the previous lesson what we noted was that an absolute value um, set of brackets always makes the expression inside of it positive. Uh, we're going to look at two methods. The first method is um, using a table of values. Uh, so using a table of values, we're going to sketch each of these functions. Uh, our first function that we're going to sketch is y is equal to the absolute value of x. I've chosen the inputs. We're going to look at the outputs. So if I always take the absolute value of x, my output will always be the positive value. So absolute value of negative 3 is 3, of negative 2 is 2, of negative 1 is 1, of 0 is 0, of 1 is 1, 2 is 2, 3 is 3. So in this particular case, if I was to graph this using a table of values, uh, I would get... This is my graph. Okay, uh, let's look at another one. In this particular case, what we're going to look at is graphing the absolute value y is equal to the absolute value of x squared minus 4. So if I always x, take x squared, subtract 4, and then take the absolute value, uh, I'm going to get my output. So in this case, negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5. Uh, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. And the absolute value of 0 is 0. Negative 1 squared is 1. Minus 4 is negative 3. Uh, but the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. 0 squared minus 4 is negative 4 but the absolute value is positive 4, and we'll get 3 here, and then 0, and then 5. So in this particular case, it's going to look a little bit weird or strange to us because it's something that we've never seen before. Uh, there's negative 3, 5. Uh, there's negative 2 and 0, negative 1 and 3, 0 and 4, 1 and 3, 2 and 0, and 3 and 5. So in this particular case, our function looks something, and what you're going to see in the next example, we're going to show you exactly where we're coming up with this, looks kind of like a weird, bouncy, reflective parabola. Uh, let's look at one more example. This next example is the absolute value of 2 times the input plus 3. Uh, so in this case, if I take negative 4 times 2, add 3, uh, I get negative 5, but the absolute value, that's positive 5. Uh, this one would be positive 3. This guy would be positive 1. This would also be positive 1, positive 3, positive 5. In this particular case, what you're going to see, uh, and we can take some notes from the previous examples, is we don't have a point on the x-axis. And up to this point, it kind of looks like what's happening is some sort of reflection on the x-axis. So I'll show you how to deal with that. Uh, in this particular case, it's negative 4, 5, negative 3, 3, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 1. 0, 3, and 1, 5. So in this particular case, we can see what's happening is it's going to go, at least we can anticipate, it's going to look something like this. Um, just to double check, what we can do is input the midpoint of negative 2 and negative 1, which is negative 1 and a half. So it shouldn't shock us as if I add negative 1.5, my output is 0. So in this particular case, um, we are absolutely correct in assuming that that was our midpoint. So our graph looks something like this. Okay. Uh, the second method of graphing absolute value functions is, so one method is using a table of values, and what we've noticed is that something is tending to reflect, the graph is tending to reflect off the x-axis. Um, so let's see if we can apply that. Uh, the second method, other than a table of values, is to graph, um, use the graph of the non-absolute value function and reflect, because what happens is actually the negative outputs then become positive. Um, we're going to get the exact same graphs, we're looking at the exact same examples, uh, just a different method. So if I graph the non-absolute value function, so y is equal to x, um, we learned in previous um, <clears throat> previous math courses, um, that this is in slope-intercept form, we could make this y is equal to 1x plus 0, or in other words, we've got an x-intercept of, or a y-intercept of 0, and a slope of 1. So if I was to graph the non-absolute value function, it would be the line y equals x, which looks something like this. We've learned this before. Uh, but in this particular case, what we do is then, the second step is to reflect any of these negative output values on the x-axis, because any of these negative outputs then become positive. So what, essentially what's happening here is I'm taking uh, all these negative points and putting them in the opposite place. So if I get an output of negative 1, it becomes an output of positive 1. If I get an output of negative 2, it becomes an output of positive 2. If I get an output of negative 4, I get an, out, an output of positive 4. So all of those points below the x-axis have been reflected. So our actual graph, uh, not shockingly, <clears throat> looks something like this, which we have noticed uh, previously. So all of those negative outputs become positive. If we do this next one, and this some advantages to this, uh, 
you don't need a table of values uh, if you know how to graph the non-absolute value form. So the non-absolute value function here is y is equal to x squared minus 4. Uh, what we've looked at previously was that this is vertex form, so it should be x squared minus 4. Uh, this is vertex form, where the vertex is 4 down, and it's the same as the typical uh, x squared graph. So over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, uh, over 3, up 9 from the vertex. So this is the typical quadratic function. And it looks something like this. However, in this case, as we know, it's an absolute value, so any negative outputs are now going to become positive. So all I'm going to do with all of these points is reflect them uh, on the x-axis. So any of the negative outputs become their absolute value. So there we go. And any of the positive ones or zeros uh, become the same thing or remain what they're at. So this becomes something like this. And you can kind of see how what's actually happened here is we do have a reflected parabola. This part below the x-axis doesn't actually exist. So you can see that we've got the same graph. Uh, and this next one, again, uh, finally, let's go ahead and graph this one. y is equal to 2x plus 3. That's in slope-intercept form. We've got an intercept of 3 and a slope of 2, which is the same as 2 over 1. Uh, so that is up 2 over 1 in each direction. So you can see in this particular case, here's what our graph would look like, our non-absolute value graph. So just to be clear with you, what I'm doing here is I'm graphing y is equal to 2x plus 3. Now, since I'm taking the absolute value, what I'm going to do is reflect any of the negative outputs on the x-axis. So this is going to become, all of these points here are going to become their absolute values. So in this particular case, what you can see is the graph looks exactly like we did previously, but maybe in a lot of cases this may be easier. It looks something like that, which is exactly the same as we'd already done with the table of values. Now what I'd like you to do is, if you can, uh, you may want to pause the video and try a couple of these yourself. Uh, within the next five seconds, I'm probably going to do them myself as well, but um, if you'd like to try them yourself, you may want to pause the video. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is not use a table of values because I find it easier not to. And what we're going to do here is just graph the non-absolute value function. So y is equal to negative 1 half, sorry, 1 half x plus 3. That has a y-intercept. This is a linear function. There's no squared. So y-intercept of 3, a slope of negative 1 half. So down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, continuously in both directions. And in this particular case, like we've already learned, all of the negative, sorry, all of the negative outputs are going to become positive. So what's going to happen with these two points and continuously is they're going to become the positive outputs or the absolute values of them. So this particular graph will look something like this. Okay. Uh, last one. It's a little bit more difficult because we don't know what the graph of this looks like. We could use a table of values. Another way to do this, as we learned previously, is to put this into vertex form. Uh, so this would look something like this. I'm just going to complete the square here. <coughs> So we need to add and subtract. Uh, that's going to be 1, so plus 1, minus 1, plus 8. And then we have y is equal to negative 1 times x squared minus 2x plus 1. And that's going to become plus 1 plus 8. So my completed square is y is equal to negative 1, x minus 1 squared plus 9. Uh, that has a vertex of 1 and 9. So the vertex is here. It opens down. And in the typical uh, function, over typical form, over 1, down 1, over one, over two, down four, over three, uh, down nine, and over four, and down sixteen um, <clears throat> from the vertex. So it looks something like this. However, what we're going to do finally is reflect any of the negative outputs on the x-axis. We're going to take the absolute values of them. So these two points here are going to become their positives. So this is going to become or look something like that. So there's the absolute value of that function.